Shabbat Shalom, Parashat Korach. A parasha of dispute, of debate, of devastating consequences, of the inability to have peace amongst our ranks. It's very difficult to understand what would lead Korach, one of the wealthiest people, a righteous man, a person of great leadership and skill, to suddenly go so array to challenge Moshe Rabbeinu's leadership and to argue that perhaps he is not speaking on behalf of God, that he is taking for his own benefit leadership positions and leaving him out of the loop. Very hard to understand what would lead a person into such a position. After all, he knew all too well the role of Moshe Rabbeinu and his special, unique relationship with God. Yet, we need to understand that if a man of such stature chooses such a direction, there had to be an underpinning for it. There had to be some kind of goal in mind more than a petty pursuit of a position of respectability. What was he really trying to achieve? Perhaps you can understand it in somewhat of modern terms, in terms of the way socialism works. I think that in its essence, Korach had a pretty good idea in mind. After all, he argued, why are we setting up a religious and judicial system in which there are ranks, hierarchies? If our objective in life is to reach out and get close to God, if that is truly the objective, then why should not everyone have an opportunity and chance to try to get close to God, as close as possible. In fact, Moshe Rabbeinu argued this very point. Two weeks ago, when Elda Dumedad, the two leftovers from the 72 elders that were picked, were left in the camp and not included in the cell of the elders, the Torah tells us that they suddenly had prophecy. And they were giving prophecy independently in the camp. Yoshua demanded having the, to have these people locked up right away. And Moshe, calming him down, says to him, Oh, it would be wonderful. How have I, every single person in this nation, should merit to receive prophecy. We should all raise to such holiness. That would be wonderful. Isn't this what Korach is arguing? Ki kol ha'ela aida kulam kedoshim. We are all holy. And if we are all holy, we all should have the right to take on positions to reach out to God. Notice what you've created, Moshe Rabbeinu. You've created social classes. There are Israelites, there are Leviites. They are Kohens. We are not allowed to enter without specific instruction into the temple. Even within the temple, there are areas that are no man zones. We need to get your permission for every type of approach that we want to have to God. This is not right. Yes, I understand if you think that temporarily you need to be able to teach us and lead the way, but why are you setting it up in such a way that we will never be able to climb up the ladder of holiness? Why shouldn't every person be able to do what our own does? If we want to reach higher up, why shouldn't we be able to? Well, in many ways, what Korach was advocating might have been a nice ideal in a utopian world, but he did it in a way that is no different than the way the French Revolution was handled. Well, gee, we don't like the fact that all of the power is in the hands of the aristocracy, so we're going to use the power of the people and demand that the leadership is given back to the people. But we know all too well what happened. If we give the leadership to the riffraff, to people that are inequipped, to people that are ill-trained, to people that don't master up to the requirements of true leadership, they very quickly become no better and perhaps far worse than the monarchy that was there before them. Korach goes to recruit assistance from the lowest of the low. Yes, of course, he does this in the guise of presenting the 250 people that were all truly righteous people that wanted to excel, that wanted to reach higher up. But the real power base 
or those that were as far as humanly possible from being worthy of true leadership positions, from being worthy of holiness. Is it true to say that we were all that we are all holy? I would say no. I would say it would be a wonderful ideal to achieve holiness in the entire people. But let's face it, not all of us could do it. Even if we're able to reach out to a degree of holiness for a brief moment, we can't sustain it. You need to be on a very high level to be able to accomplish that. Korach refused to see that. Now for itself, if he was arguing just a social agenda, if he was trying to argue the achievement of an utopian environment, it would be okay. But Korach completely lost sight of his objective and went down a very, very dangerous road. The reason Korach needed to be eliminated was not just because he created a debate, a dispute over the leadership of Moshe. It wasn't just a social agenda here. There was a fundamental religious danger that almost could have caused an entire collapse of the Jewish religious system. The Midrash tries to depict to us what the outcome of Korach's argument would have been. In describing to us a Midrash that, in a Midrash, the argument that Korach represents. It says that Korach presented two questions to Moshe Rabbeinu. Last week, at the end of the parsha, we learned about that special thread that runs through our Chittitis, the Techelet. A single thread that runs through each one of the four corners of our garments. The Ptil Tchelet. Says Korach de Moshe Rabbeinu, tell me something. If one has the ability to weave an entire talus, the entire garment is woven from this Tchelet thread, an entire talit of Tchelet, does it still require having a single thread of Tchelet coming out from its corner? Moshe Rabbeinu said, yes, absolutely. That is the commandment. So Karach said, aha, if that's the case, if I have a house that is full of scholarly books, Torah scrolls, from corner to corner, I have books filled with the, filled with the Word of God. Does this type of a house still require a mezuzah on the doorpost? After all, is it not superfluous? Is it not repetitive? Says Moshe Rabbeinu, indeed it does require mezuzah. Says to him, Korach, if that is the case, I believe that you are making all of this stuff up. That's where Korach became very dangerous. Yes, of course, Korach was trying to illustrate a point. He was trying to say that if the entire nation is holy, if everyone masters up to being a petil tchelet, or if everyone masters up to being the representative of the true words of God, then why do we need one single thread or one single parchment to be in front of everyone else. Why is that not sufficient? Moshe Rabbeinu knew all too well the burdens of leadership. He also knew all too well that it is very, very difficult to ever achieve a standard in which everyone musters up to the true calling of holiness. But when Korach represented his argument, he in one swoop endangered everything that Moshe Rabbeinu has done. In fact, he created a situation in which the entire world of Torah was put into question. Because if we question one single word of Moshe Rabbeinu, if we say that Moshe Rabbeinu did anything in the name of God by his own initiative, that he makes up even one single word that nullifies the entire Torah. Because then who is to say? What commandments did Moshe really hear from God? Which one of the 613 commandments in the Torah, or the thousands and thousands and thousands of details in the oral Torah, did Moshe make up? Did he improvise? Was he just going with the wing? Impossible. The basic tenet of our faith is that every single word Moshe Rabbeinu has spoken in the name of God was totally the word of God, without a single change, without a single nuance. Yes, there are many things that Moshe Rabbeinu said by his own initiative. There are many ideas, thoughts, actions, but never in the name of God. Whenever Moshe Rabbeinu speaks, 
in the name of God, the words are holy. Every single syllable is exactly the word of God. Korach, in the name of a social ideal, challenged the very fabric that holds our religion together. And therefore, he had to be eliminated immediately. Such a challenge to the way the law works can never be stood. Yes, Moshe Rabbeinu also believed in this social ideal. Perhaps someday we will reach a utopian life in which we will all be able to be holy, that we will all be able to strive to get as close as possible to God, even though it is clear to us that every person has the glass ceiling that God has dictated by himself. By virtue of your birthright, by virtue of the talents that God has given you at birth, you are already predefined in terms of where you are allowed to climb up to. And each of and one of us needs to know that we strive to get as close as possible, as close as we, as individuals, are possible to go, with constant respect to the Word of God and to the law of God. At the end of the day, Peace is what binds us together. Peace between us. Careful listening to one another. Careful caring for one another. And this is the answer that Moshe Rabbeinu gives Korach. He turns to God and said, I have never taken even a single shoe lace from these people. Nothing. I have never taken anything from any of these people for my own personal benefit. I am dedicated holy, totally and holy to the word of God and to the service of these people. And because of that, God, you need to step in over here. We need to pray that we never again in our history need to suffer from those people that take social agendas as pure-hearted as they may start off as and use it to rip apart our people. And we shall never again be challenged by people in our leadership who disregard the outcome of their actions in order to be able to advance their own personal agenda. Shabbat Shalom.